was Sister S worth talking about? Memory of a crime that, com that I committed. Memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it, not Edgeworth. So, the pa some people memory has been troubling him recently. But he never takes someone's life, never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? <laughs> what do you think of my performance today? I had him swimming in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, me and my heart skipped a beat or two. I think he could do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow your head to your- right before your hero. Harry, you really helped out in the t trial today. He did! If you weren't there, Larry, if you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have found, been found guilty. <laughs> Seriously, Nick. That boot shop keeper, keeper, ah, the boot shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. What a word. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I'm sitting, Edgy seems seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know he's not he's telling the truth about that night? Nick, I don't know. But what I do know is I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two. Ashworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Huh, me? But why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <laughs> hmm. And up with the silent treatment. Nick. Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? Well, you didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear the story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story. So hang in there. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> it's the very end of third grade. It was on trial. A class trial. A uh, class trial? <gasps> I'm getting more flashbacks. <laughs> right. You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade. Kid in our class got his lunch his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PA class. I was coming down with the code, so, with a cold, so I skipped PA that, PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it. Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So, the next day we held a classroom trial with me as a defendant. I didn't do it! Guilty you did it! Guilty it was you! Give the money back! You're such a meanie. No one wants to face him. <laughs> Just admit it, you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. We're not gonna play with you anymore. Yeah. Uh, you should be allowed in the relays. Or, uh, I can't read it fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher, teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. 
I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone's staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. You shouldn't have to apologize. Not only it belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. Shall be ashamed, amateurs. <laughs> Miles. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apo shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That's why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? <laughs> wait, why is he here? <laughs> oh, wait, no, this is the next day. This is always how it is. Everybody's getting it up and picking on one person. Just think about, just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I'll replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. <laughs> That's when I learned what I meant, when it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Uh, yeah, well, I was just lucky I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So, I took it kind of personally, see? If something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edsworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remembered his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. Famous defense attorney. And a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. Deal's sick since then. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. It's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicious Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. He couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him. To learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he had to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. The only one who knows the real Edgeworth, and the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick. So, that's why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. <laughs> Aw, Nick, Nick. Nick, you have to say Mr. Edgeworth that it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very might, well, well, maybe. Oh, <laughs> I didn't read what she said. Oh. <gasps> Dang it. I accidentally clicked. We need to find out who he, who or what he is. Solo for who? Guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. What did I get rid of? We still have this. I guess that photograph. And I think there was something else. I don't remember. Oh, let's go here.
He looked as grim as always. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh. Alright. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Heck, I think I'm the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't... didn't... Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That child was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. <laughs> that said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me. And you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended on was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name is Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter. Any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. I'll be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago. Three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we were suffered. We all suffered o suffered oxygen deprivation. Oh my god, <laughs> can't say that word. I lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even yeah, now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. Claims Yanni Yogi had been not a sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Deprivation. <laughs> Depri <laughs> I can't. I can't say that. Yogi was released due to the lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of the courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist, perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life. He's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Oops. He should find a weakness of should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself I in which I find myself, I admit. No kidding. Well I guess we'll take a look around. Hey pal, long time no see. <laughs> oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat truck caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have to- I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come with me. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Pick up Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Eek! <laughs> no one can go into the woods today. The woods? Armada was camping. 
The woods are off limits to camping. Apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one could go in for a while. I guess Lada's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Well, we can go to the beach. Huh? The steel samurai. The steel. <laughs> the steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. Okay. Drinking on my big water bottle for now. <laughs> Guess we'll move. Let's check out the rental shop. See if we can find anything, I guess. Maybe? <laughs> that old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Uh -huh. I know that quilt, that clearing of the throat anywhere. Uh, hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, uh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see? Mr. Grossberg. This is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But the one I saw of today's trial. Today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> hmm. Find anything out, but if you find anything out, come by the office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grosberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? See if we can talk to, the, I guess, the bird. <laughs> oh, then he's home. Hello, hello, Squawk. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello, Squawk. Can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to defend for, to fend for herself. Hello, hello, Squawk. <laughs> Maybe I should take care of Hot Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. At least know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's gonna hate me. Um. Well. I guess we'll move on then. Hmm, looks like the death of Gumshoe hasn't gone back, gone back yet. Gumshoe, he won't be coming back today. Oh, really? So there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. Boatshot caretaker. Shout out something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Well, good luck, Gumshoe. <laughs> okay. Maybe we can share... Deal sick stuff? It was that case that changed my life. Tomorrow, on December 28th, the Statue of the Lamentations runs out. Tomorrow, could that be a coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it'll never be erased from my memory. Never. Poor Esther Edgeworth. Should we show him this? Nick, no! <laughs> a photo of his father. Don't show him that. You're right. That was probably not a good time to dredge up those memories. <laughs> what is it? Um, nothing. <laughs> huh? Well, I thought. Can we ask about this photo? What are you showing me this picture for? No reason. No, I was impressed by your deduction in the trial today. Granted, you were at the end of your rope, but 
still. Nick, he noticed. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not sure I can help you with that. Okay. I think Skull looks like he didn't turn the heater on. I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. Oh! Ah! W what's wrong? Huh? Oh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just, when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Oh. See, that's why I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> that reminds me, Nick. Polly knows this number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? Oh. That's a safe? I didn't realize. One, two, two, eight. Squawk. <laughs> Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. But hey. It keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in here. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Aw, boring. Hmm. There's no name or signature on this thing. His handwriting is very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Most of the letters go on to describe the murder of plot, murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. It's exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect detail. What do you think is very I don't know, but it looks like these are the instructions for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written this le in that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for sure certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Ugh. Oh. Okay, finally. I found something good. Anything else? There's nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Okay. I thought that was like a... Like one of those portable stoves. <laughs> I thought that's what that was. <laughs> Not a freaking... Safe. Um... Oh, wait. Huh? Maybe we should present this. Edgeworth, see this letter? Mm hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. See. Revenge on me. Who is that old guy anyway? I, I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Maybe. Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi. A suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who, who was found innocent. Oh. There we go. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. The earthquake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. 
The air thinned, and darkness closed in us, closed in on us, and that little box came unsettled. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said, quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remembered. When it came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen de deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court, and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. And isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Urchworth. Why would he want to get re revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me the last few days. I didn't know whether I should tell you or not. You mean the nightmare? Right. Nightmare ahead. Memory of a crime. Crime that I committed. Crime you committed. Memory of a murder. <laughs> I think, I think the time has come to tell all. Oh my god. <laughs> For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Hey, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't shout. It just used up more oxygen. That's the same. I, I can't breathe. You, you're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. Oh, I'll make you stop. Ah, oh, what, what? What are you doing? Stop breathing my air. <laughs> no, father. He's attacking father. And I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was from if it was evidence from that day in the court or the bailiffs. The days I picked up the pistol. Get away. Get away from my father. <laughs> Should be laughing this is serious. <laughs> and with that scream I wake. It's a bone chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past fifteen years. But that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it, if you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted- Oh, revenge. Something. Hey, Edgeworth, you mean- It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. There is someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick. There is someone else who knows it about DL6. Well, let's go. <sighs> Prove I'm not guilty of one murder and... <sighs> Looks like he's guilty in another. <laughs> Mr. Grossberg? Uh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you, you're... I can't believe you're not. My, my, my. <laughs> Just calm down and tell me what's happened. It's Mr. Edgeworth. He... He... I see. So Edgeworth Trent said he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, huh? Well... 
So consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds deep, a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep he wants to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagine. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. Pistol fired, and the deed was done. No. I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irre irrevocably erect. What? <laughs> I was struggling. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance. Of course, the statue of limitations so close. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without a peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he might have no might, he might have one he might have had one peer, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister. Gregory Edgeworth was very dis disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. It's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man, forged testimonies and evidence that are nothing to him. The result, he had a perfect win win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. He died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called a spirit man. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff. Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. No one called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. Must have not known, sorry. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But possibility nonetheless. Hmm. Oh, shit. Oh, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a, was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but... Socially, he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. <laughs> Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Manfred von Karma? <laughs> what? Hmm. Could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma. Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait! You're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But... But that means... The one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? It is true that if it is if it truly was von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press this, he'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But how could von Karma know about Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet 
I do know that Von Karma is both persi persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy the grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation, accusation stood. Faulty evidence. It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, some mountains? That's how he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he, he took a vacation from work. Maybe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. He wanted to keep a perfect record so badly. Why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Juan Karma is going to bring to bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I don't. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose you, I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials, huh? Oops. Wait, do we have anything to talk about? No. I was gonna go... Oh, here. That's what I was gonna go to. There's hardly anyone in here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. That's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. Staying out of like, to look for someone. Feels like Detective Gunshu is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could go check out the records room again. Well, now I can't just have anyone wandering around in there. But, but I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You could go in as long as he's as he's he's there. Von Karma. Yes, he just arrived actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. Uh oh. Dusty as always. We're only here just yesterday. I'm sure they haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Well, and Karma. Huh? Huh? One of the drawers is here is open. So I must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases? Nick, the file for DL6, it's completely empty. What? What are you doing in here? Oh, this is weird. <laughs> Nick! Von Karma. You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Ledger's defense team. Defense team? Beg your pardon. You see, you see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me, needless things to be crushed. See how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. I how he's smiling like that. It's weird. <laughs> um, uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? 
romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of uh, amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney. Why? So dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Hmm. So you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? Son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of the trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, we lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will omit his own guilt. He's guilty 15 years ago, you mean. You're quite the researcher. You've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the courtroom tomorrow. Or you were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up deal six in court tomorrow. Wait, what do I do? That's it? Is there anything else to look at? Looks like there are files inside this glass case. The case is so dusty, I can't see what's inside. Nick, it's locked. You yeah, must keep important fi case files in there. This cabinet is where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons, others are question marks. Also, it just looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think this this clothespin is for? Don't touch that. It's evidence. This large door is half open. The label on the drawer reads, unsolved cases evidence. All the stuff in here looks like random junk. Only the evidence in DL6 is missing. And guess who took it too? Von Karma. There's still stuff with case files in the back of the room too. Vagana cases, running away for eternity. Nick, let's get what we need and get out of here. All this dust is getting to me. Here are files collect of collected case reports. Quite a large quite, quite a large volume of reports here. Wow, these are all case reports? Yeah, it's like a graveyard of police cases. I guess my sister's case report is in here too. Quietly gathering dust. Well. What do I do now? Maybe we should talk to Edgeworth again? <laughs> what do I show him? Fool. You think I'm a prosecutor? You think I, a prosecutor, would give you a defense attorney information? Bah. Creep. Show him this letter. Oh my god. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit a murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I heard him heard him called by that name? He's a fool. Told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it. You you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter? Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick! What is that thing? A stun gun. For self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts would course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. No! No! Oh, what are you? Nick, run! Ah! <laughs> Maya, out of my way. <laughs> what the heck? Did no one hear us scream? <laughs> uh, he got us. The letter's gone. Of course. He took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Maya? Maya, open your eyes. 
Naya? The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Y are you okay? I, I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm not good as a lawyer or a medium. Can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. Wish I hadn't woke him up, woken up at all. Aw. Aya. There has to be some way I can help her. Better do something about her self-confidence first. Naya. She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? Field 6 evidence number 7. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. One karma was holding this when Maya jumped in. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. <sighs> Are we ready to finish this thing? <laughs> I'll keep going. Has it been that long? Okay. Let's see how this is gonna go. <laughs>